Redemption is a mod from 1999 that acts like a sequel to Half-Life. Basically, this is from an era where no one had any idea what Half-Life 2 would be like, and that is an important factor to keep in mind. Meaning there was no announcement, no trailer, no leak, no beta, nothing. It was a complete guess what Half-Life 2 would be like. In 2000, Redemption became Absolute Redemption, which is the retail release of the mod that shipped with Counter-Strike with new updates and changes. That is the version we'll be looking at today. Check out Marfi's video if you're curious what changed between the two versions. Personally, I never played this mod before, but I do remember it being on a bootleg CD I bought back in the early 2000s, so I had no clue what to expect from this mod. But all I'll say is, I was pleasantly surprised and also very irritated. So let's take a look at this classic and memorable mod, Absolute Redemption. The mod kicks off with a big ass exposition dump, like it goes deep into the lore. But let me cut to the chase. The mod says that after the first game, the Zen aliens became friendly with humans, but you see, they had a problem. The Zen aliens were going to open a new portal to Zen and destroy them. So they would ask their agent, the G-Man, to get Gordon and thwart the Zan aliens' plans. How you might ask? Well, by uh, rescuing these little alien butterflies from Half-Life 1. Yeah, and there are like three of these and they are called Telnorps. Ugh. So that's the gist of it, if I understood this correctly. These aliens are actually from Zan and they want to do a rebirth of the Nailanth or something, and these are Zen aliens that we need to help. Or something like that. Look man, this shit is confusing. And now, one of the best G-Man impressions I've ever heard. Like genuinely, the voice actor behind this did a great job at this. Ah, Gordon. Thank you for offering to assist in this difficult situation. It appears you have caused an impending problem throughout the galaxy and beyond. The Zen portals have been left open by the release of the Telnorps, and it appears our friends are in some danger. Holy shit, what happened to Gordon? Where's his goatsy? I mean goatee. However, I do understand some of you might be breaking your keyboards at the fact that there's a cutscene in a Half-Life mod. Please calm down. Now here's what's interesting. In the original drafts for Half-Life 2's story, this was actually the story. Sort of. You see, Gordon would be working for G-Man, going from planet to planet, kicking some alien ass. It's kind of interesting that this is a coincidence. But then again, the ending of Half-Life 1 literally has you accepting G-Man's employment offer, so I guess you could have made this assumption naturally. Another thing of coincidence is the mention of Zen portals opening up on Earth. If you didn't know, that's what happened after the events of Half-Life 1. The portal storms happened and uh, in came all the aliens from Zen. This is something that's conveyed to us in Half-Life 2. But yeah, this cutscene is kinda long and honestly, way too much exposition for my taste. I do find it charming, but still, it's way too long. Basically, he's telling us to get those butterfly aliens and stop the Zan aliens from opening the portal or whatever, like... Ugh, man, this is charming, no doubt, but I just don't want a story dump thrown at me. The TLDR is, there are three Telnorps in three different places. One in the Himalayan mountains, one in the, uh, carnival, yeah, we'll talk about the carnival soon, and one in Giacetelli's, 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 Giacetelli's warehouse. Now, who's Giacetelli? I don't know, man, he's working with the Zan aliens, or I think he's just a bad guy who wants all the Telnorps? Yeah... With that done, we start our journey in the agency headquarters. And not gonna lie, the G-Man has one fancy ass office room. Whoa, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Again, I gotta say the voice acting is pretty good here. The guard sounds very familiar to Barney from Black Mesa, I mean from Half-Life 1. These are the new Mark 6 suits, Mr. Freeman. As soon as you have that on, we can get down to the teleport room. 
We put on our suit and head to the teleporter room. Before that though, we see a small cameo from underrated Half-Life protagonist Gina Cross. That was nice. Locked and loaded, we step into the teleporter and well, we get teleported to the Stonehenge. I love the mood here though, classic gold source aesthetics. Alright, the Himalayan mountains. All we have to do is find the Telnarp and... Of course there's a fucking turret right around the corner. Now, these aren't the HECU, these are mercenaries working for Gisatelli, or whatever his name is. They're here for the Butterfly Alien 2. Now, I gotta say, I really like the visuals in these sections of the mod. The Gold Source engine isn't known for doing outdoor sections a lot, but surprisingly, this mod pulls it off. The wide open areas and then the smaller caves mash together to form a pretty good experience. The combat encounters with the mercenaries is also pretty fun. Sometimes they're out in the open, sometimes they're in the dark caves. There's even one shooting a mounted machine gun at us. And of course, there are fucking turrets out in the open as well. I did have to adjust my brightness and gamma later in this level because the uh, 25th anniversary update defaults them to a much lower value, so everything looks dark. The mod also throws in a bit of parkour, having us jump from ledge to ledge and other good stuff like that. Overall, this level had a solid start that unfortunately had a pretty rough end. Another thing to mention is that this mod is a little bit on the difficult side, at least for me, due to lack of any power cells or HEV chargers in the levels. You'll definitely get med kits and first aid boxes, but even on medium difficulty, I mostly had my health below 50 throughout my whole playthrough. Now we arrive at the temple. Again, really good looking visuals here, great texture work, lighting, and the overall feel here is very charming. Also, something's off. And by off, I mean we're gonna be fighting like 12 dozen black ops agents in the dark. Woohoo baby, let's go! Yeah, I hate this. This was the point where I had to turn up my brightness and gamma cause honestly I couldn't see jack shit in the dark. I did like the temple interiors with the low gamma but that was resulting in poor gameplay for me. Also, a neat little thing I noticed is that the Black Ops intentionally broke light sources and these health reviving water pots to make the battle more difficult for us. That is one hell of a detail to include in a mod, I'm not gonna lie. The interior temple parts were frustrating, honestly. I'd much rather fight HECU or, you know, marines or mercenaries in here rather than these Black Ops. But from here on, it's just Black Ops as your main enemy. In the midst of this frustration, I did not forget to appreciate the map work though. The intricate layout, the nicely designed brushwork of the maps and the lighting all worked perfectly together. Playing this, I realized why so many Half-Life fans consider this a classic mod. And for a mod from 1999-2000, this mapping is certainly a step above his contemporaries. What is this, man? We finally get to the Telnorp and of course, I got ganked by two Black Ops. Her grenade broke open the glass dome and the butterfly flew away and teleported to god knows where. Well, our work here is done. Hopefully there's no more pesky Black Ops to fight. Time to get out. <sighs> For our escape, we have to run through this cavern while fighting what I consider to be the most frustrating enemy in Half-Life 1, and then a dead end, but our security guard friend comes in clutch at just the right moment because there's a goddamn helicopter about to attack us. The security guard opens the portal and we teleport to the next Telnorp's location. Telnorp. Norp. It's such a funny word. Then we get a shot of the satellite that the G-Man is using to track our location. Ah, Gordon. Well done for convincing our Himalayan friends to part with their Telnorp. I'm sorry, is someone robbing the bank? What is that alarm sound? And this is the most hilarious part of the mod. G-Man just casually walks and sits in the taxi, waiting while it's running. And when we turn around... He honks the horn! What a madman! Whoa, what's wrong with this guy? I think this is supposed to be Boris. Thank God you've arrived. 
health and safety guy, da? Yeah, the problem is down at the new flying saucer ride past the big ferris wheel. The damn thing just went totally nuts. There's lights flashing everywhere and there's this green blobby stuff kind of floating in the air. Okay, so apparently one of the carnival rides, a uh, flying saucer from Zen is freaking out or something and we need to take a look at it. I think this carnival is like a Zen themed carnival or something. This section of the mod is just odd. I mean, it's a big ass carnival, right? With a bunch of rides. I mean, it's charming, but navigating around and finding the saucer is so confusing. So they have a bunch of Zen creatures, including Mr. Friendly and the Kingpin on display, and the second Telnarp we need to save as well. And a River of Love ride or whatever it's called. Oh, I just noticed. The park's called Half Park. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. Ugh. Again, if I had played this back in the day, back when I played They Hunger for the first time, I was like 6-7 years old, this would have been one of the most memorable mods for me. But now, as a 29 year old suicidal schizophrenic, I find a lot of this just being there, you know? Like, it's there. It's kinda cool, but... Ugh. Taking the rides or interacting with the stuff around the map is cool for like 10 seconds, but then you just wanna get on and you know, get on with it, get things done. Finally, we get to the saucer. How in the world did they repurpose this into a carnival ride? All it did was make me dizzy with its moving texture. Here I had to hit these three buttons and then press the button on the control panel and lasers shot out of the rock and like, that fixed the saucer? But also aliens spawned in too? Now we're up against Vortigaunts, a whole lot of Vortigaunts and other aliens as well, but the Vortigaunts don't make sense cause story wise, we believe in the intro text that these warts are Zen aliens that should be friendly with humans but they're not for some reason? I don't know, then who are the friendly aliens, just the butterflies? Also I had no clue what to do here so I jumped through the electricity losing a big chunk of my health. Now, I had a gut feeling that the Telnorp should be able to escape now or something, so I tried to make my way there, but the direct way was blocked by a fallen electricity pole. So of course, we have to take the long way around, and I swear to fucking god, I just couldn't figure out any of this maze-like level. I just kept running in circles, and speaking of circles, I thought this was the way to progress further. I fought these grunts, shot these hound eyes, just to circle back to the entrance of the ride. Like... What? Then I got onto this ride and finally I was able to make some progress but of course halfway through the goddamn track it was broken and I jumped off cause there was a goddamn gonark right next to me. Then once again all ways ahead were blocked so I literally jumped into the pool that would instantly zap me and kill me but I surprisingly made it out alive with 12 health. When I got to the Telnorp's location, there was a goddamn gargantua there and he broke open the Telnorp's cage to let it out, for some reason. So first, I tried fighting the thing. Didn't work. I tried again, looked around, trying to figure out what the fuck I was supposed to do but I kept dying. Well apparently, I wasn't supposed to go behind the gargantua. I was supposed to just stand there when I first saw him and then just damage him as much as possible and then the Telnorp destroys it and teleports away. Amazing. Once that's done, now we just have to make a mad dash to the exit and teleport away ourselves. I know. I told you that the intrepid Mr. Freeman will collect all three Telnorps into one place. Yes, he better. Mr. Jusatelli said to tell you that he's paying good money for these damn months. So apparently G-Man's a traitor and working with Giusatelli? Or Giusatelli? That, that bastard. The next location is Giusatelli's warehouse where the last Telnorp is located. I find this oddly high definition banana funny by the way, like banana, 
So now we break into the warehouse how one usually does, you know, by swimming in literal poo. Uh oh, stinky, poopy. Now here's where I have to get real with you. From this point on, I was very much irritated to the point where I just didn't want to play the mod anymore. I feel like the modders behind this mod were originally Doom modders because that's what this section feels like. A classic Doom map. Corridors upon corridors, no sense of navigation, no sense of layout, like you have like 9 million doors, all of them open and by luck you'll go through the right one. If this was a Doom map, it wouldn't be a problem because Doom guy runs at like Mach 5 speeds, Gordon does not. You know, unless he's bunny hopping, then that's another story. Then there was this one part where there was a bunch of oil barrels, some electric components like this generator and this one and a locked door. There was also a sign saying security active. So I thought, hmm, I guess I have to disable the security. Maybe I need to use the oil barrels to blow all of this up. I spent 30 minutes trying so many different things. Blow up the door. Nope. Blow up the blue generator thing. Nope. Blow up the cables on the wall. Nope. I spent so much time here, my son graduated high school and he was only one and a half years old when I started making this video. Do you know what the solution was? Let me show you. <sighs> I don't know what to say at this point to be honest. Go ahead. Call me a fucking pleb for not figuring this shit out in 0.2 seconds. Once that was done, the locked doors were now open. After that, mercenaries and looping corridors and more mercenaries and more looping corridors. I didn't in the slightest feel like I was making any fucking progress. I even pressed tab unconsciously thinking it might bring up the map like Doom would. The thing is, a lot of this section is super nice looking. Like I said before, from a mod from 1999, this is outstanding in terms of visuals. The lighting, the sprites, the texture work, all of it is gold standard for what maps should look like. But in gameplay, oh my fucking god, the mod falls flat immediately at the gameplay part. Like seriously, it looks fantastic visually, but gameplay wise, it's a train wreck. So we do free the third butterfly alien, but I didn't get any footage of it because I was so goddamn pissed off and I didn't record it. And then we escape from the facility. Holy shit, what happened to Gordon? Then we end up at a safe house with a security guard. G-Man comes to visit us and then fucks off immediately. And then it turns out the G-Man actually double-crossed Gisatelli and is actually a pretty good guy. I did tell you never to tell me how to do my <laughs> business. Dang, what a twist. Then we end up in Zen where we see the Zen aliens' portal. We free the Telnorps again for some reason, blow up another Gargantua, and then the Telnorps shut down the alien portal and we jump into a teleporter. The end. The TLDR of this mod is what I've been saying since the start of this video. It's a fantastic looking mod, especially for its age. It looks as good as mods do today, but a majority of its gameplay in the middle and later levels just fall flat so hard, I don't understand why people call this a fun mod. It's a good looking mod, it's a classic mod, and I do understand why it's a classic mod. It came out at a time when Half-Life modding had just started and this was groundbreaking at the time. But its gameplay has not aged well at all. The story is kind of interesting but the massive exposition dump and deep lore kind of makes it a little too much to digest. But yeah, that was absolute redemption. I had fun playing this and you should definitely check it out as well as, you know, it's a Hall of Famer mod from back in the day. So thanks for watching and a big thanks to these benefactors for supporting the channel. Hawk, Unusual, Taylor, A Normal Street Lamp, Mistress Pabon, G Out, Nobody Important, T.S. Tromer, Scary Stalker, It's Juro, Scooms, Aoi, Imperial Embers, T-Boy 301, Jack5282, Lucky You, Quiltman, 501st Clone Boy, TTG, Robocop, Noel, 
Tedosaur, Lamdre, Roadkill, Walter, Fisher Grice, Hawk Assault, Jelen, Tierwar Droid, and Bipolet. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.